the eternal dawn of our penances heralds its imminent end. Each was born to put an end to the other. Now both await. But while yours slumbers, mine remains vigilant. May the miracle bear witness to this oath. By which I remain here for our long-awaited meeting. Wounded by the silence of this secluded existence. And then, as the city of the Blessed Name rose up, born on the shoulders of three mighty statues, the resounding beat of a great heart could be heard emanating from the clouds, thundering like the knell of an unseen church bell, raised higher than any other, enchanting us all to lift our gaze aloft in an ascetic call to prayer. For the miracle was about to give birth to a child.
penitent one, returned from the tomb, and walking among the mourners, your awakening is now written on the eternal pages. Anunthiada is my name, and I hail from the heavenly mountains on high, the seat and the beginning of all that is holy, so that I may address you. Look upon me thus as a preceptor in this enterprise, hailing from the highest of all seats. Penitent one, the miracle shall give birth to a new child in a great heart descended from the clouds that watches over the ancient city of the blessed name from on high. You must reach it to stop its birth. But on this ascending path of penitence, the Arch Confraternity awaits you. Those penitents that the miracle itself took as its sentinels now await your arrival. Orospina, the Confraternity of Embroiderers. Benedicta of the Confraternity of Endless Orison. Odon of the Confraternity of Salt. Lesmes of the Confraternity of Incorruptible Flesh, all under the dictate of the oldest penitent, the first among them all, who was Eviterno, father of the penitents. Penitent One, the miracle has instilled three regrets in the consciences of three of its guardians. Only by revealing them shall you achieve the humiliation of the sculpted figures that hold up the city, allowing you to ascend to its upper reaches, and finally to the Great Heart. Look for the guardians.
Welcome to my most humble of workshops, which is a flurry of sawdust, glue, and varnish. Montagnez is my name. Master sculptor, one of those who, with steady hand and silver chisel, patiently carve out from the wood the faithful shapes of our true saints, so that they might be contemplated and revered by the devout. No trace of light remains in my glassy eyes, yet still I know what thou seekest and needest. For are we not all penitents on this earth? In some way, the miracle proclaimed that, as my profession was that of a master sculptor, I should carve in wood the figure of the Most Blessed Lady as my last work of art. Penitent one, I beg you help me in this, my final piece of work. Seek out for me the finest chisels and tools, the most wondrous of pigments, and the most delicate of varnishes. And I can sculpt for thee figures that will fit into the altarpiece you carry on your back. Like this very one I offer to thee here. Please accept this as a gesture of my unending gratitude. It is but the first piece of many more I shall carve for you. Now I shall place it upon the altarpiece upon your back, and you will feel its grace, but also its burden. The hands of the miracle will guide me in the carving in accordance with the memory you bring me. May they guide thee as they guide me, penitent one. The altarpiece on your back now has more capacity. Here I will wait for you until you gather more marks of martyrdom to extend your altarpiece. May the hands of the middle. Seals not but shadows. Here in my darkness there remaineth but tears for me and forgiveness for those of you who seeketh it. Where are the bereaved now? Where are the repentant? How long since the long agony of this sacrament began? Now that your penance of silence and the pain that plagues your flesh has led you to my dark confessional, let me purge the guilt you bear and thus alleviate your burden. Penitent one, return when the guilt scorches your brow. I will free you from your burden, for that is my purpose. Penitent one, I will...
Who are you? Whose face and name you keep hidden? No. Your name is of no consequence if your footsteps have led you to me. Yerma is mine own. But this is not the right moment. For the steps that my promise inspires are swift, and the will that directs them unshakable. This hatred, which blinds my reason with shadows. I must leave at once.
Here our wills cross once again, O oh, nameless, penitent one. For a long time now, my life has been naught but a constant struggle to fulfill a promise as old as these lands. Is it your wish to meet her? When I was but a girl, I was able to escape the horror of the deformity engendered by the miracle. A miracle that chose the clean reflection of the still waters of a lake to reveal the truth it held in store for each of those who gazed within it. The old bell, which had fallen to the bottom of the lake many years before, began to ring, making the waters ripple to its eerie chime. Our reflected faces began to distort before our terrified gazes, and the miracle ended up capturing that work, that disfigured horror on the waters, as if it were a fresco, making everything that had been reflected in them disappear. As I fled, I turned my gaze towards the lake and beheld that ghastly event from afar. Penitent one, can you not hear it? We find ourselves in the confines of one of the ill-fated forms of the miracle that yearns to meet thee. Do you wish me to join you in your next confrontation? Then I shall continue my search until our next meeting, Penitent One. Clouds of dust herald your arrival. Dust in the air that is born from the erosion of the walls, the statues, and our own bones. These stones heard so many sins that they could do no more than succumb, shuddering before their guilty echoes. Echoes that could not bear the seclusion that I imposed upon them and that escaped from me. Crawling along these walls, eroding them until their immaculate ashes buried us all. Penitent One, you will now reveal your sins, those that your tears can never atone for.
witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Radames, spent my long life listening to the confessions of so many burdened hearts. Even after death, I could still hear the echo of their mournful voices, begging to be heard again, pleading for confession. But their pain never managed to bring tears to my eyes. One of those echoes, those incessant voices, was the very voice of the miracle, who commanded me to guard its sacred regret. I obeyed, and it was then that my tears did flow. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. The memory of him still hurts. So it was that a humble married couple, torn apart by their inability to conceive a child, entrusted themselves in their utter desperation to the miracle. A miracle whose light seemed to have gone out in all our hearts. For having long ceased to bathe us in its benevolent radiance, we believed it extinct. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to where that terrible dream, from which one never wakes, awaits. Penitent one, you have encountered one of the three regrets. The first part of the testimony of the birth has been revealed to you, and the eminent sculptor figure of the father has descended. Find the other two guardians.
penitent one of merciful steps. My golden mask weeps to see you before me. You are in the garden of high choirs. I am another of the holy brothers of the golden visage, born of the miracle. Oh, tireless time that travels without delay and erases a past. Conjuring up uncertain futures, make us remember when the miracle imposed its dark punishment upon us. That which prevented us from soaring and traveling with the breath of the wind. Penitent one, free my brothers who, by the designs of a miracle that already seems a stranger to us, are imprisoned and scattered throughout these lands under the gaze of the great heart that has risen on high. Only they will allow you to climb to the highest point. Help us by freeing more brothers, and we shall reveal to you what the tower holds at its highest point. Open up the skin and red flesh. Uncover the lie that my shell conceals, for I am only blood and bones. So allow the chalices to be filled with those who toast kings and priests. Now I shall grant thee a new flask. Bring me more vials. Bring me chalices and... Come closer and contemplate this delicate tumbaga. 
the embroidered shawls, the silk dresses. You are in Rahima's shop. My goods are my home, my bed. They are as much a part of me as I am of them. You point, and this diligent arm will surely grant your request. Here among my wares, I shall await your return. Blessed are we, for I behold a penitent. Humbly allow us to present ourselves to your reverence. We are Medardo and Escolastico, pilgrim merchants and scribes by trade. You never know where precious assets may be. What, pray, can be unjust or malevolent in walking the roads in pursuit of a twofold profit? That of the pocket by selling? and that of the spirit by prayer. While Medardo pays penance in his meditative meanderings, I take care of the business side of things, sparing not a drop of ink to write about the beautiful landscapes of the many varied paths we travel. But go ahead and cast your eyes upon our shop window. The objects that were lost on voyages have great appeal and fascination, as they have become a reminder of the feat itself. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Is there nothing of interest to you? What a pity.
Lyra. You stray from your path, making your footsteps mute imitations of our own. Let not these black mists deceive your eyes, for you stand before the procession of shadows. Figure of the sinuous mists, pay us with the false coin, the one with jagged edges and forgotten features, the one that is worthless and desired by none. Thus, we will guide you through the dense blackness to the remotest of places. Figure of the sinuous mists.
This crown of majestic buildings was built to study the awe-inspiring glow, but hinted at the shape of a basilica once witnessed by fervent worshippers. No one has ever laid eyes upon it again until now. The miracle bestows its blessing upon us all by revealing to us what has long been hidden, invisible, and out of bounds. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Until our paths cross again, penitent one.
I live again inside this merciless and cold metallic casing. I live in this cage in the shape of what was long ago my body. I live and I feel that I am directed by forces that undermine mine own will. I live, although when I close my eyes in the intimate darkness behind my eyelids, I am still dead.
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. My body has been returned to me at last. I am now master of this flesh, of this trembling, of this agony. How sweet the pain when it is our own, penitent one. You who came to witness the miracle, behold. But their plea was so humble and true that the miracle, whose lofty reasons are beyond our earthly ken, finally stirred from its slumber, aroused from its repose, and moved by the sweet melody of such noble supplications, it blessed this couple of devout believers, whose faith had never wavered, granting them the child they so desired. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to wear that terrible dream from which one never wakes, awaits. Penitent one, you have known the second of the regrets, and with it, another part of the testimony. The figure of the mother has descended, full of mercy. Anon, the upper part of the city, separated from the rest by the miracle's design, will join the rest. Find the last guardian. This mallet is so wonderfully balanced in the hand that it feels quite effortless to move. Know that you have my gratitude, Penitent One. A piece on your back. Here, I will wait for you.
may the hands of the...
Sleep, my child. Sleep.
and you may die, perhaps even rot away before my very eyes, but that will not help you. I can wait as long as it takes, long after those insatiable worms have finished their repulsive feasting. In the end, I will discover that secret thou hast been concealing from me since the first dusty cobweb appeared under the eaves of this home, and since the first wrinkle marred thine already pale and bony forehead. But for now, behave yourself. Can you not see we have a guest at our table? Sit down, sit down. Welcome to this humble table. My name is Castula. For that was what my parents so desired. It is a great rarity these days for footsteps to echo through these lonely halls. And believe me, yours have not gone unnoticed. What dost thou seek here? Dost thou crave the same fate that befell so many unfortunates who ended up possessed by the very gold they sought to make their own? Yes. This manor is awash with mysteries, secrets, and curses. If only I could find the hiding place of my brother Trifon's manuscript, perchance I might have at least one less mystery to solve. How deluded you are. Did you think you could keep it from me any longer? Do not listen to this brother of mine, dear visitor. Do not believe his untruths. What... What does this mean? It's blank. I can't hear you. Where have you gone, Trifon? Don't leave me. Stay, even with intrigues, even with secrets. I no longer hear your voice. I do not believe you have gone. Is this another of your deceptions? I no longer I do. Is this...
Welcome to this palace. How silent, how mundane these luxurious chambers have been. Halls that were once frequented by the most distinguished of visitors. They all ended up staying here, captives. Trapped, petrified like golden statues, prisoners of the very riches they craved. Dance now with my steel, penitent one. We will embroider your flesh in sacred torment, in a tapestry of blood and gold. Be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Orospina, am the daughter of the looms, of the mantle of gold and fine silver and scarlet and white, eldest sister of the confraternity of embroiderers, ancient secret of the needle and the thread. Where I go, nor shimmers with gold, and my graceful steel will never again adorn the air with its elegant silver calligraphy. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. But the miracle who bestows and wrests away its grace with inscrutable agency, saw its will tarnished in its prolonged absence. Erring in its newly created work, it conferred on that child as much its own as that of another. 
the blessing of deformity. It spread throughout our land, like a contagion. Its accursed seeds germinating like the wounds that sprout upon the scourged flesh of the repentant. The warm and golden caress of twilight invites me to close my eyes. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to where that terrible dream from which one never wakes awaits. The full testimony has been revealed to you, and the counterfigure of the witness has at last descended. The three great stone figures of the family have humbled themselves before us all. Raise your eyes as the dazzling beauty of the upper reaches of the City of the Blessed Name welcomes you. Now go forth. Let not doubt leave its vexatious mark upon you.
With this crystal, I mark and imbue thy flasks with silver and bile. Only the miracle shall know how many crystals have been bathed in its grace. Now I shall enhance the vital light within thee. I shall wait for thee to bring me more chalices. I shall wait for thee. Bring me more. Only bring me chalice. Here among my wares, I shall... Yourself, so be it. The sacrament has been completed. Your guilt has been purged. But will remain my eternal burden. For that is my appointed purpose. Now go in peace. I sense how its veins nourish a body that seeks to be wounded with my chisels and hammers, that yearns for the cuts and indentations that will free it from its coarse origins. Allow me to present you with a new piece for your silver altar piece. The altar piece on you here, I will wait for you. the hands of them. 
May those who seek seclusion enter. <laughs> Miracle, thee who possess the keys to open all things, and the hands to lock them, welcome thine servant. Penitent one, Thee who comest in search of the morning behind our black veils. Find my daughters, and snuff out the light of the candles that accompany them. Only then will you be able to enter into their morning. The vigil is not find my daughters. And for your thirst, I am water. For your cold, fire. Oh, make way for he who does not yet know me. 
who has not yet kissed me. Parishioner, you come seeking mine own sweet blessing. Kneel down and place your lips on my holy sanctity. Dolores, feel how my grace fills thee with joy. I alone am thy refuge. I alone am thy comfort. Blessed are those who venerate me, for they will feel my favor, the favor of holiness itself. your further, exude from every fissure of your armor, and rejoice, mine own penitent one. I shall continue to assist you, if you grant me your kisses. Bestow upon... When darkness descends on my tiles, my lanterns awaken. It is their light that protects us in this shadowy corner full of old rosaries. My name is Sagrario. Knotting rosaries is my penance, and I cannot serve a more virtuous cause than thine own, penitent one. If you give me the knots, I shall increase the mysteries of your rosary so that they might fill thee with consolation. Do you have rosary knots, penitent one? Now, let my hands knot a new mystery on your rosary. Your rosary now treasures yet another mystery. I shall wait
Is it your wish that I continue with the story of... Do you wish me to join you in your next confrontation? Then I shall... Until our next meeting. How dark and uncertain are the rooms where the miracle allows us to see and talk to one another. Even after the deaths. Even after the dreams. Penitent one, we are in the chapel of the five doves. And before you prevails the narrative voice of the witness. All that remains of me is testimony. For my deceased body lies exposed in its urn of crystal and gold. You return from the long dream to avoid the birth. You will have need of the uncorrupted tongue that my mortal remains still harbor, whose forbidden whispers will guide thee on the path to such an undertaking. Release the five doves, and thus the urn containing my body shall be opened. Wake up now from this dream.
silent and one. This is no place for anyone. Can you not see that death breathes the very air that dries our throats? That it walks in our footsteps? You cannot even hear the cries for the dead. For here, even crying is forbidden. I will remain in the shadows, sheltering behind these bars, so you cannot look upon my diseased countenance. But although no one has ever managed to find out who he really is, I can reveal to you a name. Casto. How ominous that name sounds when spoken in these shadowy enclaves. I may have something for you. If so, be sure to take it and go. I shall in I shall wait for bring me chalice.
militant one. Help us by freeing more brothers.
Frey. This gouge, as precise as it is delicate, is unquestionably the most suited to this noble wood. Know that you have my gratitude, Penitent One. Allow me to present you with a new piece for your silver altarpiece. The altarpiece here, I will wait for you. The altarpiece here, I... May the hands... Now I shall imp- I shall wait for thee. With this crystal, I mark and imbue thy flasks with silver and bile. Only the miracle shall know Bring me ch- Upper reaches of our city, once unreachable and unfathomable, have descended. Countless legends tell of the many secrets that the heights have hidden and laid watch over for seeming eternities. Can it be the city that prostrates itself before so many parishioners, beckoning us to witness the birth of the child more closely? What holiness lies before us? Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Until our path.
penitent one. Be pleased to receive this gift that a candid voice in a dream asked me to give thee. A voice whose owner shall always be unknown to me. O oh heart that descends from heaven, what doth thou seeketh from us? shows us mercy, and bestows upon this shadow the right to speak. Never will I comprehend for what exalted reasons I was chosen to witness and narrate the events by which the miracle sought to return to us. For many eons have passed since it abandoned us. Oh, I see my request was granted, and that blessed pilgrim delivered my offering to you. Cast open the cages whose keys were stolen. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison.
Help us by freeing more. Welcome back, the flower, but the beauty of each bud conceals a thorn in my side. A penance that I carry with exultation that brings me closer to my purpose and perchance to your. So, so be it. The sacrament now goes. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Is there nothing? What a pity.
these verses chain us to an everlasting prayer that transcends death itself. Join me in endless orison. The miracle was to create a new icon, an incarnate icon for all to revere, a symbol in which all our faiths, pleas, and hopes might be united in communion, so as to expand its diminished, almost extinct, might. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, Escape your gilded prison.
cathedral has emerged from the dark, inky sea. Never did I think I would see this with these old eyes of mine. Pray, why does the miracle wait till now to bring it to the surface? Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Until a
Lacking sufficient mastery, the miracle did fail in its efforts to incarnate, manifesting only in the form of disease, deformity, and pain. It spread more and more of its aberrations, like sores on diseased skin, in many places and on innocent bodies. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison.
stop. This sacred place is about to crumble around our very ears. And I have barely strength enough to support the entrance to our chapel. My name is Regula, and this body, which towers over you, is nothing more than the punishment for an abhorrent sin I committed many eons ago. The miracle is just, and granted me the vigor to sustain this threshold. However, after interminable efforts, I feel my strength gradually waning. With each tremor, these merciless rocks sink deeper into my flesh. Should my arms yield to the weight, the shrine will be buried, and the saint never again venerated. For pity's sake, hear my cry. Between the tremors, I am sure I heard the collapse of some of the chapel walls. I am convinced that a passage into the sanctuary has opened up from somewhere within this labyrinth. I implore you, find it before it is too late.
Penitent one in bitterness, here is the vengeance of the grievous one. My name is Cesario. For asking for milk to flow from this loined breast, for begging for food for this child of mine, cruel grace has manifested itself. I can still hear a sweet voice in the echo that seeks an outlet in these waxen walls. On this earth, supplication becomes punishment, and punishment itself becomes holy and pure. There is no more forgiveness for me, but perchance there might be for my child. Find the wax seeds and plant them before me. In those holes will sprout sisters who will watch over my offspring while I go wherever the will of the miracle wishes to take me. Find the wax. <laughs>
wish me to join you in your next call. Then I shall can until our next. The gaze of an innocent, looking for a glimmer of hope in the visage of so much desolation. It took nay more than that, for the shape of a heart to be molded out of the air itself. Behind the most wondrous clouds that did turn the sunset crimson. Oh, innocent vision, you madeth the mirage true, relying on pure faith. Twas then that the miracle gained its last chance. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison.
penitent one. You emerge from the tower that has always been believed to have been severed. But a few among us know that in truth, it was the miracle that nailed it face down. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Until our power... I feel divine hands guiding my own. In a heavenly... The figure of the most blessed lady is beginning to emerge.
The file you bring is able to polish wood and leave it as smooth as the petals of dried flowers. Know that you have my gratitude, penitent one. May the hands... So, so be it. The sap now going. Here among my...
Rosary. Now, let my... Your rosary now... Do you have rosary now? Your rosary now... I shall wait for you.
I may have something. You want nothing. further, ix mine own penitent one. Feel you mine own Feel you mine own Bestow upon me. The bells chime twice, for the vigil begins. And we shall sink into a sea of mourning.
<laughs> May the bell and we shall
From every seed, a sister of wax shall sprout. Call upon them all to have mercy on my child. From every sea call up. From ev call. From ev call.
Anon, this glass sarcophagus shall open, the relic of mine own uncorrupted tongue and its secrets shall soon be yours. Then this shadow can give thee no more. I go soon to that lodging between light and nowhere. This shall be our farewell. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison. The resting time between the thundering beats of the descending heart shorten irrepressibly, thus heralding the imminent birth of the new child. Hasten your steps to meet it, penitent one. My hands attain virtue through obedience and constancy. I begin to feel them go numb, as if submerged into an icy sea. They move of their own accord. Now, they are more of the miracle than of me. May the hands Now I shall... I shall wait for Now I shall... Bring me more vi... With this crystal... One more mark on thy vials. 
would crack their surface and contaminate their blood. Bring me chalice. This point is almost completed, penitent one. Do not allow your will to be sapped.
Much time has passed since your last visit, Penitent One. You must know that I am a blind man, and yet the miracle has seen fit not to plunge me into utter darkness. More than ever, its divine light shines within me. A fiery glow that outlines with meek compunction the features of Our Lady at the very moment we witnessed the most wondrous act we were to behold in our humble lives. All who were there were blinded by a light, a fleeting flash that compelled us all to avert our gaze, thus casting us into deepest darkness. The remnants of that radiance engraved upon me the merciful visage, beautiful in both form and proportion of Our Lady. Never could I forget it, for I was branded by that fire that burns perpetually within mine own eyes. May the hand
To your reverence, I address myself. After seeing myself freed from grief following long years of regret, I dreamt I saw some bees create a honeycomb of sweet honey inside the now empty recesses of my soul. But the miracle does not distinguish between dreams and truth, and my dreamt punishment became incarnate. O oh, creatures of the miracle, what do you want from me? Your reverence's visit to this repentant, punished sinner shall not be in vain. Take this as a gift. If perchance this gift I give you should break, losing its worth, return it to me. This honey which doth not cease to flow, will be able to undo the damage. Let the bees continue in their sorrowful work.
figure of the sinuous mists. Now pray, lie down on the cold stone and let the black curtain envelop you in darkness. From every seed, call upon them all. <laughs> Find the wax.
nay the hands of
Behold these beautiful oil paintings. With colors that radiate life itself, know that you have my gratitude, penitent one. May the hands of the... Roughness becomes smoothness. Wood becomes skin. May the hand... Now, let my hands knot it. Your rosary is now complete, penitent one. When you feel sorrow and the sky bears no stars, press your rosary close to your breast. It will bring you comfort. When you feel it will bring you... the bell and we shall sing May the bell and we shall
May the bell and we shall Now you have what you want. Go forth. With those who think they are blessed, go forth. With those who seek forgiveness by looking out rather than in, go forth. With the falsely afflicted and the weak in faith, go forth. Bestow upon me My child, you are now free from punishment. My body will melt and become one with this high tower that you can see from afar. And I will watch you from its battlements. Go with the sisters, my child, penitent one, Pray, take this token of gratitude. <laughs> oh, 
blessed be your heart. <laughs> Allow me to present you with a new piece for your... May the hand... On high welcomes thee. Above, dark clouds gather and swirl in vile serpentine dances. The child is born. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. We are
Now I shall enhance the vital... Although mine own blood does not cease to flow, your body can take no more of it. Now I... There is no more room for vials in thy belt. Oh, these varnishes, like the morning dew, will give thee the purest and most immaculate of glows. Know that you have my gratitude. Now, allow me to put the finishing touches on it. The body has been unveiled. 
Now, the color and varnish will endow upon it the grace that was intuited with unwavering devotion. Now, uh... one of uncompromising will. My brothers and I are grateful to thee. 
See how they rise, as if the weight of their bodies had been taken away from them, and with it, their sorrows. The road is now complete. The highest point of this garden awaits thee. Fill us with joy, penitent one. You shall always find a home in this garden. We surrender ourselves to your charity. Penitent one, may the miracle watcheth over you. My name is Venerada, daughter of Master Montagnes. My father now rests his weary back and tired hands in the light of the everlasting mercy of Our Lady. May the miracle offer him shelter in his well-earned glory. Following in his footsteps as an apprentice of the beautiful craft, and in gratitude for the help you offered my father in completing his last and most momentous piece of work, I offer thee my services in carving your altar pieces. It is as he would have wished. May the miracle be with thee. I am at your service, penitent one. I have carved a new figure for your altarpiece. Pray take it. May the miracle be...
the end for which I have long yearned has finally cometh. Bear the countenance of the Shroud to that place where it ought never to have ventured. The statue, the saint. Penitent one, now that my face has been restored, I may at last speak to you. My devotees will return to this chapel by virtue of your actions, and the sacrifice of the Blessed One, who will never be forgotten. O oh, Regular, seek my forgiveness no more, for you have it. Now you're by my side, and can rest your weary shoulders in my arms. As for you, Penitent One, accept this in memory of Regula. I am forever grateful. May my blessing be with thee. running along the clear shore, under black leaves, under long branches. What did you see, my child, in the reflection of the water? What took your laughter? Who stole your soul? Sleep, child, your silver dream. I will watch over you until the dawn breaks. Sleep, my child. Sleep. Don't cry loud. My voice sings to you.
It pleases me to see you again. Behold, you are witnesses to the free will of your own guilt. Is it not beautiful? An immaculate form born of parents baptized in sin. So, so be it. The sacrament now go. Here among my
Parishioner, brimming in faith and adjuration for my divinity, your fervor already overfloweth. You may go in the knowledge that here, before my sweet blessing, you shall receive all my protection.
corruption. You have acquired the last of my goods. However, we never know when the miracle will bestow new blessings upon us. This waiting, this endless waiting, has been my penance. The original penance, as old as the miracle itself. It appointed me first among penitents, perpetual by its grace. Perpetual in awaiting you an eternity. My miracle, heed my prayer. Grant me thine blessing to fulfill thine holy command. <laughs> Dress my body in wounds. Lacerate the tattered parchment that clothes my flesh. For I am the first penitent, and you shall be the last. Now let the Crimson Bindings finish what they once began. My penance is far from over.
The child is born. The clouds open up before thee and shed crimson tears. Thus begins the work of the High Dramatist. The child is the clouds thus begin.
higher will. Incorporeal and inscrutable fathers. I am the heir of your all-encompassing light. Devotion itself, embodied in weathered flesh and gilded filigree. Your magnum opus. Though I am crowned with your glory, why do you censure my presence alongside you? What is this obscure darkness of unanswered cries that prevents me from understanding the purpose of my birth? Are the same crimson clouds that heralded my welcome the grave omen of your judgment? If this confrontation is proof of thy dignity of your glory, then so be it. Now I understand, and for this I offer thee my humble thanks. This pain is my baptismal sacrament that will unite us in communion to make it flesh. Thus, 
we will be reborn as a new symbol incarnate, overflowing with devotion. The beginning of a new era for the miracle. The second Sun. will. Incorporeal and inscrutable fathers, I am the heir of your all-encompassing light. Devotion itself, embodied in weathered flesh and gilded filigree. Your magnum opus, Though I am crowned with your glory, why do you censure my presence alongside you? What is this obscure darkness of unanswered cries that prevents me from understanding the purpose of my birth? Are the same crimson clouds that heralded my welcome the grave omen of your judgment? If this confrontation is proof of thy dignity of your glory, then so be it.
Doth thou respond to my pleas? With pain? Pain in the flesh. Yet your very flesh I am. Pain in the heart. Yet your heart itself I hold. My punishment will be your sole legacy. And I shall die. I shall die reconciled with the mystery of my birth. The devotion of the many was made incarnate and suffered pain. The affliction cometh to an end, for the icon falls, and with it the miracle's designs and its will so capricious. And so you shall ascend, both in body and soul, through dreamed kingdoms, to the holiest of places, to the cradle of all blessings, safe under our watchful eyes. And once there, you will be captured within the ancient canvas of light and time. The penitence is thus complete.